I want to welcome, you, welcome every single person here once more, one more time to Good News Church. Turn to your neighbor and tell them welcome. Just turn to your other neighbor, tell them welcome, and you look good this morning. You guys are not alive. I want you to say with more faith, turn to your neighbor and say welcome. Amen. God is good. We believe that we're a live church. Amen. The only place where people are quiet is at the seminary and we are not in such place. Amen. Um, we just had a t uh, team that came back from Ukraine just recently and we're, where God is moving, where the pastor Mantian there. And we see what God is, is doing, how God is saving and rescuing the nation of Ukraine, how God is changing that nation. We also follow the ministry of Prophet to be Joshua as you saw in the videos where God is doing things that you only read in the Bible, in the book of Acts where God is healing, God, God is just casting out demons and this is where our church is going, amen? This is is where our church is going we're going to be a mega church we're going to see thousands of people come to know Jesus Christ we're going to see incurable diseases being healed in this place we're going to see people who are demonly oppressed the enemy who's attacking people's lives we're going to see their lives being delivered for God's glory amen if you believe that put your hands together for Jesus Christ it is awesome to be part of this movement, a part of this revolution where God is going to bring a revival to our city. We believe that we'll see in schools as the young teens are rising up. We're going to, we believe that by the end of this year, they're going to have services in this building where they're just going to take their schools for Jesus Christ. Amen. It's going to be an, a cool thing now in schools for, for people, for young people to be on fire, to see demons being expelled, to see young people being praying for incurable diseases and this is going to be the new cold thing and our teens are the ones who are going to lead it so we ask each and one of you in this place be praying for our team's ministry we believe that God's going to use them to do mighty things that I mean they're much much cooler than we were when we were kids I mean I I had a chance to go to my little brother's um, concert, jazz concert, and when I was I was at the back, I was just trying not to let everybody know that I'm his brother, you know. And uh, after he played his drums and things like that, and afterwards, everybody, there was like uh, 50 people gathered around, and I'm like at the back, hey, I'm his brother. You know, I mean, these young people are just, they're, they're, they're popular, and they're on fire for Jesus Christ. So we encourage you guys, pray for our teens ministry. God will use them to reach a level that we weren't able to reach. Amen. So with that being said, we're going to get into the Word of God this morning. If you have your Bible, let's open to the scripture of Jeremiah chapter 20 verse 7 and we're going to read. And the Bible says, O Lord, you misled me and I, and I allowed myself to be misled. You are stronger than I am and you are overpowered me. Now I am mocked every day. Everyone laughs at me. When I speak the words burst out, violence and destruction. I shout to these messengers from the Lord have made me as household joke. Verse 9, but I will say, but if I say I will never mention the Lord or speak in his name, his word burns in my heart like a fire. It is like a fire in my bones. I am worn out trying to hold it in. I can't do it. The scripture that we read this morning um, is of a prophet Jeremiah and he was a prophet and um, he did not have the most popular ministry that you can um, that you can think of. He was he was sent to go to the city to be able to preach the word of God and he was telling to the city to repent but that message is not the most favored message that you can think of. It was just a message where people are doing the thing, uh, they were just comfortable living their life but God tells Jeremiah go into the city and tell them to repent and as we read this morning verse 7 if you can go back to to verse 7 Jeremiah says that said Lord you misled me you you tricked me in Jeremiah feels like God has taken advantage of him God has has led him into this message Jeremiah just feels like God what I'm doing people are laughing at me they're not taking me as I'm serious they're not taking me as a prophet I'm like a joke to every single person Jeremiah had a ministry where it was not popular to do what Jeremiah was doing and at a point in verse 9 and verse 8 that we see that Jeremiah says that but, I was, but if I say that I will not mention of the Lord or speak in his name, his words burn in my heart like a fire. 
Jeremiah came to a point where he wanted to give up, where he wanted to not even speak of God's name. He just not wanted to mention, he just wanted to leave that ministry. Just say, God, I, I do not want to do nothing with it. I wanted to quit. And this morning I want to speak and I want to take a little bit of your time to talk on the message, uh, the topic called the honor of wanting to quit. Tell your neighbor the honor of wanting to quit. Turn to your other neighbor, tell him the honor of wanting to quit. It sounds kind of, uh, you know, oxymoron, how, how, how is there an honor in wanting to quit? Wanting to quit is not a problem because it puts you in a good position. It puts you in a good company. You cannot quit if you've never done anything. You cannot quit if you are not doing something right. Every time you are doing something right, Satan will try to talk you out of it. Nobody that has never done anything can quit. How can you quit if you have never done anything? There's no there's no dishonor in wanting to quit but there is dishonor in quitting we read the bible we read the word of god and we see many heroes of faith who wanted to quit but the bible never calls them quitters or the bible never calls them weak the bible calls them the pillars of faith because at a point their life the faith was being tested in a new way which they did not understand at a point we see Jeremiah, we see John, we see Peter who, who basically who actually wanted to quit. Let's, let's talk, to, let's talk the, the most, the biggest and the apostle uh, Peter who betrayed Jesus, who walked away, who went fishing, who said look I'm done with this. I just, I cannot handle it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to do anything with it. But the Bible never calls him a quitter. The Bible never calls him as weak. The Bible calls him the rock that the church was built on because there was a time in his life where his faith was being tested in the new level which he did not understand. There's never a dishonor in wanting to quit but there is dishonor in, in quitting. You cannot quit if you're not doing anything. You cannot quit if you never have done something right. We see in the Bible many, many, many of the people and one of the things is that one of the greatest attacks upon your life will come after a victory. Many times people, they come to Jesus Christ, they give their lives to Jesus Christ, they walk away from sin, they begin to live a life for Jesus Christ and that's when the greatest attacks happen in their life. Where Satan begins to attack their life, they begins to put doubts in their mind is that the whole, your whole family comes against you, things are not begin to work out on your finances, your career, your, it seems like your marriage, your family begins to fall apart because Satan is attacking your life because you are doing something right. Many times we want to bring people to church and we see that many of our friends, they, they befriend us. Our whole family says, what is this whole religion that you gave into? And it is that Satan that's telling you, quit. What you're doing is wrong. You're may, you might be tired and Satan will try to talk you out of it because you are on the right path. You're doing the right thing. There is not dishonor. There's no dishonor in wanting to quit, but there is dishonor in quitting. After every victory, after every time you do something for Jesus Christ, Satan will try to talk you into quitting, talk you into discouragement. Wanting to quit is a sign of success. And many times uh, like when, I, when, I, when, when, we go, when we begin to face hard times, when we begin to face a time of trial where we sometimes we feel like God does not hear from us, we face a trial or situation in our lives where where things begin to stand against us the things that we believe they begin to fire back at us this is a time to be able to run to Jesus Christ and not away from him this is a time I'm not wanting to be able to go back on the, on the bridge that you're burned trying to, to resurrect things from the past and just to give up on Jesus Christ this is a time to stand fast in your prayer to be able to run to God and be able to seek help from him because he's the only one that can pick you up and take you to a new level we see the life of Peter whenever he wanted to, to when he wanted to give up and Jesus Christ said Satan uh, that, that Satan ha has asked to sift you as wheat but I prayed for you 
This is to show when our faith is being challenged, when we're going to have a hard time. Maybe it's a sickness that we've been praying for. Maybe it is that you're praying for your husband or you may be praying for your kids to come back and it's been years and the time has been passing and you just want to give up. But I want to encourage you this morning that there, it's not bad that if you want to quit, there's honor in that because you are doing something wrong. But you, there is this honor in quitting run to Jesus Christ because he is the solution to all the fundamental issues of life he is healer to those who are sick he is is freedom to those who are bound he is blessing to those who are lacking he is the beginning he's the end he is the way and the truth and the life come to him when you are discouraged I want to just go for uh, I just want to go give you a few tips and few points that I want to just let you know and how not to quit. What are some things you can do when times are tough and you just want to quit? Um, number one thing I want you all to run down uh, to write down is burn all the bridges behind you. Live a life of no return. Burn every bridge that you have behind you many times we begin to fall after God we go to a new level with Jesus Christ and sometimes we we feel like if we leave a bridge if we just continue to you know if things do not work out we can still step back that is a place where it can set you up for failure if the moment that you do not burn the bridges behind you you're setting yourself up to quit many times we see in um our pastor when we first started this church you know it, the message and, and the vision was to see thousands of people saved to see a revival come into cities to be able to see that you know we will have be a church who'll be able to reach out to the Americans to the Hispanics to the Chinese to every single culture in in our city but there was a time where it was it was not easy where things were not working out but our, our pastor he lived a life where he said you know what I cannot go back I have nothing to run back to I burn on my bridges I can't go back the vision was clear and cut to see revival happen to cities to see the oppressed being being delivered being being uh, being set free to see those who are lost come to know Jesus Christ and he stood up on that message he wasn't preaching a message where if it's the will of God let the let the poor come to Jesus Christ let the sinners come let those who are sick you know come to Jesus if it's the will of God that is living a life where you leave a bridge behind that is a life where you live where if God does not heal I can step back so I'm not embarrassed you know when I talk about burn all the bridges many of us when we come to know Jesus Christ sometimes we leave some friends behind that we can run back to when things are not working out with God sometimes we leave that that addiction behind that if not if everything is not going well with God I can still go back to that and I'll still feel good I sometimes we leave a bridge behind our finances that if God does not provide I can I can go and get money dubious ways I can go steal I can go trick some people into it we leave some bridges behind and if that bridge is left behind you're simply sending a message to God God I do not trust you all the way I do not believe that you can provide living a life of victory and every champion of faith that we read about in the bible can tell you one thing if you burn every bridge that is behind you you're setting yourself up that God will say that I am faithful and I'll come through for you when you burn every bridge behind you you're saying to yourself you're sending a message God whatever happens the only way I have is you and I believe and I trust that you you'll pull me through live a life of no return greatest life greatest lie in the world when it comes to Christianity is living a balanced life that is the greatest lie a Satan can give or, or you can believe for your life to live a balanced life that I'll give some time to church I'll give some time to God I'll give some time to my family I'll give some time to finances all these they, they begin to live a life where, where they're so balanced yet they're not fully and their life does not belong to God that is the greatest lie you can we're not saying that that family finance all these things are not important but we're saying when it comes to our Christianity our belief in Jesus Christ we have to give it our all Jesus Christ one life for him is all I have and there is no going back 
Family is important. When we see many times people begin to, to, to miss church, they begin to trade God for small things. A, a small work thing comes up or a small, you know, a, a birthday comes up there or there. And we begin to trade God for small little things. We begin to live a life where, where we're balanced. They call it balanced. There's nothing wrong with being balanced but if God is not number one, if you don't depend on God for your, for your provision, for your health, for your, for your emotional balance, for you to, for God to be able to provide for you, you sooner or later you will set up yourself to fail in that thing that you're accomplishing. Normal never changed history. Mediocrity never delivered a life of, of people, a person who's addicted to drugs. A person who's well balanced never rewrote the history of the family. Is we see those people who are radical after God, who give their life fully, who sell themselves out to Jesus Christ. Those are the people that change history. Those are the people that are able to, to bring a change in the city, in their, in their community, in their family. Everything that had to do. When we look at our pastor, he did not live a life of balance. He said that, look, this is the vision from God. I'm standing for it. God is everything that I have. And today we are the byproduct of our pastor's vision normal was never an option for our pastor was one life for Jesus Christ and that's all that I have some of us we are in this place where we feel that nothing is moving nothing's going working out you know I'm inviting my friends and I just feel like you know I need to maybe step back one secret to success is give your life all the way to Jesus Christ and you'll see that he'll come through for your life amen number two is don't tell anybody that you want to quit don't tell anyone that you want to quit. If you want to complain, complain to God. If you want to quit, run to God and begin to pour your heart out. There's a famous story that comes that comes in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 30 uh, verse 1 to the end. We read that when David has went into the war with... Um, well, he just went into the war and he left the city behind. He went with his 600 men to go to battle and they had one of these greatest victories. But as they were coming back into their hometown, they saw this, this, their hometown being burned down, uh, their wives and their children all being captive and all the spoil was taken by the enemy. And they came to a point where they begin to weep, they begin to cry, doubt sets in, you know, discouragement sets in and at a time everybody just be, just began to the, the man that they were following David that this 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 man of valor this man of faith became that people begin to pick up stones and they were so weary they were so tired they were so angry that they wanted to kill David and you see David in that position where you read that story carefully he never began to pour out his heart to his people he did not try to complain to his people you know guys this is how I feel you know things are tough I, I know how you feel he never ran to his people but he ran to God and he began to complain begin to open up his heart to God and say God look what happened to my city God what do you want me to do should I should I give up or should I pursue and that's where he see that strength came to David and he went to his enemy he took he took them he defeated them and he took back every spoil that the enemy has taken from his life you see that David did not complain to his men but David complained and he ran to God and he asked God can I overtake him can I take back what the enemy has stolen from me anytime discouragement sets in run to God and complain to him anytime you want to quit don't begin to talk to your neighbors don't begin to run to people and just say things are tough you know you know I don't understand you know because many people they're not on the same path as you are you know many times their faith is not on the same level so it's like a lawyer going to a janitor and you know when tough when you know he's going the lawyer goes to school for seven years and a lawyer coming to a janitor and asking him for advice of not to quit of course the janitor will be like dude just quit you can get a job today it doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense for somebody to to begin to complain to others because you do not know your destiny your destiny might differ from somebody else so if you run to your friends and begin to complain to them things are tough I want to quit you're just basically canceling your destiny run to God and complain to him God things are not working out what do you want me to do and that's where you'll find the strength to overcome and that's where you find the victory you all overtake and you will begin to change the history of your family you begin to change the, you know that your nation your schools the the place where God has put you you begin to bring a difference into that place amen church 
We see that another, another time where Saul in the Bible, when things were not working out um, in his life, and Saul, anointed man of God, he begins to run to a witch doctor, to begin to ask for advice, he begins to do foolish things. And we see by that decision, he begins to cancel out his future. And we see a sad story that Saul, who God, who, who, who God has anointed, he lost his life because he begins to counsel people. He begins to, to counsel the people who were not in the same place as him. So when danger comes in, when discouragement comes, we should burn all our bridges. And number two is we should never and never talk to the people. We should always run and to complain to God about that we want to quit. We see that... Um, when Jesus in the, in the garden of Gethsemane well, before the cross we see that Jesus was experiencing a tough time where there was doubt of of wanting to quit and we even read in the bible where Jesus said Lord let this cup pass me by one thing that you notice about that story that Jesus was not with his disciples and he was not complaining to his disciples he ran to God and he began to pour his heart out before God and that's where we see when Jesus has said that God let this cup pass me by. The moment that, that he said that the strength came to him where he said, God, not my will, but your will be done. And he received strength enough through, to endure to the cross. And we are celebrating today because Jesus' focus was not broken. Jesus received that strength when he came to God at his weakest point of his life. So I want to encourage you this morning that don't run to your friends when you're feeling down. Don't go to, to your, your broke cousin when you are, you are feeling broke, when you don't have enough finances, when things are not just not working out and asking for advice because they will mislead you. They will cancel the future that you have for you. Run to God and begin to pour out your heart because he's the one that will be able to take you to your destiny, to your future. Amen? Amen. Number three is don't expose yourself to what you do not want to be. Don't expose yourself to what you do not want to be. Expose yourself to that which you want to be or where you want to grow. And with our church, one thing that our pastor always tells us is that to be able to surround ourselves with churches where God is moving, where people are being saved. That was one of the reasons where our team went to Ukraine for two weeks. That was one of the reasons our, our team is actually leaving in a week and a half to go to Nigeria to the prophet TB Joshua ministry, the videos that you just saw. This is the reason why we stay connected to Dr. Young Cho ministry where, where it's the largest church on, uh, in, this, in this world is because we're surrounding ourselves ourselves with people where we want to go when the time comes in where you want to quit begin to put yourself in a position begin to go to a place where it can stretch you not where you can let out your feelings don't ever go to a zone where you can just pour your heart out go to a place where you can be stretched a place where you can pour your heart out is in the presence of God not in the presence of your friends amen we see that, uh, you know, our pastor always encourages us to, to every day to listen to the podcasts where God is moving. Watch the videos where demons are being cast out. Watch the show videos at church where people are being healed. It's because that is a place where we're going. That is a place where you can be encouraged yourself knowing that this is what God's going to do. This is where God is going to take you. This is where, where God is going to use you to do. So begin to surround yourself with people, with books, with mentors. Because when the discouragement sets in if you are connected to the wrong place you will soon quit you will soon give up that is why it's important for you to go to a place where you can be stretched and number four is find a purpose for your life the two things that Jesus Christ has given us commandment is love God and love people this is you know this is the best thing that that as a Christian we can do and the two and the most important things that God has given us commandment for is loving him and loving people those two things can never come go missing from my life because that is what brings you joy you know when you see people's lives being changed when people come out and surrender their life to Jesus and you were the you were the one who invited them to church that's what brings joy to you you know that you have to wake up next morning because somebody's destiny is depending on you to reach out you know somebody's life is hanging in balance and they're waiting for you to reach out to them you loving God and loving people the two main things in in this in this secret you know not to give up because 
when discouragement sets in your love for God and your love for people will be able to get you through and we want to to encourage every single uh, uh you know person this morning that there is reward there is victory and dedication and commitment in in selling your life out to Jesus Christ loving God and loving people there is reward in that you see as you you give your life to Jesus as you give your life to the mission where God has called you to the purpose where God has called you to go into the world win souls and make disciples you see that your life will be have meaning you see that you will find joy from that you'll find contentment you will see that when you come your relationship with God will not be stagnant but will grow to a new level in Christ Jesus amen church did anybody get anything from this morning Come on, put your hands together for Jesus Christ. I just want to go over again to, of the four points that we went over this morning when, you know, the, the honor of not, of wanting to quit is that one, burn all your bridges. Burn every bridge that is behind you. The number two is don't tell anybody that you want to quit. Number three is don't expose yourself to things that you do not want to be. Don't expose yourself. That is very important because we have many times people who go after God, who, who surrender their lives to Jesus Christ and they go back to the friends who are still in the world and they want to count on them for, for, for encouragement, for ideas and that's not how it works. You know, don't expose yourself to that. And number four is find a purpose for your life. So those are four, th four things, four little uh, things that will help you in life when, when, you know, when you hit the hard time in your life. Do these four things that you will find the strength in Christ Jesus not wanting to quit and not wanting to give up. Amen. Because our future is bright.